You already know about quadratics, f of x equals x squared. This is a quadratic. And you can transform it using the values a, h, and k. And when you do that, you get a quadratic that's expressed in turning point form. It's called that because it shows you very clearly what the turning point is. Negative 2, 2.1 transfers over to the turning point of 2, 2.1. Is there such a thing as a cubic in turning point form? Well, sort of, but we'd never call it that. Now, I've reset back to f of x equals x squared. And I'm going to change that squared to a cubed. Watch what the shape changes to. This is f of x equals x cubed. You can see it looks like x squared, except the negative half of it has flipped around. Okay, so that's f of x equals x cubed. Now we can start transforming it. Now, if I add something to the function on the end, it's going to move up. And if I subtract something from it, it's going to move right. And you can see I've transformed this thing and I've got this special point here called a stationary point of inflection. We'll write that down in a minute. Uh, and you can see I've got this special point here that's represented by these values here. If I choose one more value, negative 2, that refers to the 2 here, and positive 3 refers to the 3 here. Now this a value, it's going to do what a values do. It's going to stretch that function out, or it's going to um, squish it in, or it's going to reflect it when it becomes negative. All right, so that is the beginnings of looking at the turning point form of a cubic uh, function. So this is our function. This h and this k value come together to tell us what the stationary point of inflection is. That a value there dilates about the x-axis, stretches it about the x-axis, and it will reflect our function if it's negative. Now, the most basic form, again, is f of x equals x cubed, and it will look like this. Okay, so that's it, and that is our stationary point of inflection. And that h and k value will transform it and move it around the space. Uh, now that's really all we need to talk about when it comes to cubics in turning point form. Now obviously in the same way that if you know some information about uh, one of those equations, you should then be able to determine its equation. So if you knew the h and k value and you knew another point, you could find out what the a value was relatively straightforward. A very quick example of this, if I see this cubic function here, I should know straight away that it's going to be a bracket x now, the h value is, uh, I've got my stationary point here. Now, I need to use the negative x value of that, so x minus 2 cubed plus k. Now, it's moved um, 1 up, so plus 1. All right, so I know that so far. I don't know what the a value is, but I do know that it's passing through 0.33. So I can sub 0.33 into my equation, and I'll have 3 equals bracket. 3 minus 2 cubed plus 1, 3 equals a, uh, 1 cubed is 1, so just 1a plus 1. That means that a equals 3 minus 1, which is 2, and therefore f of x equals 2 bracket x minus 2 cubed plus 1. So exactly the same process as how you would find the equation of a quadratic if you saw its turning point and one other point. All right, that is uh, cubics in uh, turning point form. Turning point form, it's definitely not turning point form. There's no turning point form. No turning point to have a turning point form. But it feels a lot like it.